She was supposed to be a good wife, but she secretly cheated on her husband with someone else in the public restroom, thinking that no one would know about the affair. But the woman never thought. Her husband had already realized her infidelity. He didn't expose her to her face. Instead, he chose to deal with the matter calmly. The husband hired a private detective. The woman never thought that because of a moment of passion, the fate of the couple was gradually pushed into an unpredictable abyss. Connie is a middle-aged woman with a lot of charm. She has a lovely son, Charlie, and a successful husband, Edward. They live in a luxurious villa in the suburbs. They have an enviable life. Such a family life should be a symbol of prosperity and happiness. But a sudden typhoon unexpectedly shattered the peace. Connie went to the city center to buy groceries as usual. On her way home, she was hit by a typhoon. The storm made it difficult for her to find a cab. At that moment, Connie was knocked off her feet by a strong gust of wind. She accidentally fell into the arms of a young man. And the gears of fate turned in this accidental encounter. This guy, Paul, looked to be in his 20s. He was handsome and charming. Connie stumbled over to the steps and sat down. She asked Paul to stop a cab for her. But the fierce typhoon winds prevented the driver from stopping. Paul saw that Connie's knee hurt. So he offered to take her upstairs to his apartment to get it treated. Connie was hesitant. But with Paul's funny, handsome face, she finally gave up on the cab that drove slowly past her. But Connie had no idea that this would be the decision she would regret the most. Connie walked into the apartment with trepidation. Paul was a bookseller, so he had a lot of books in his house. As Connie dressed her wounds and prepared to leave, she was greeted by Paul's hot coffee. Connie suddenly remembered her son, who had just gotten out of school. So she asked Paul to use the phone to ask the babysitter about him. Connie was not aware that her long legs and her charming posture had already made the young Paul fall in love with her. While Connie was talking on the phone, Paul suddenly grabbed ice and put it on her wound, faced with the unexpected touch of skin. Connie's heart felt like a deer in headlights. She hurriedly ended the conversation and turned around to say goodbye. Before leaving, Paul gave her a book as a souvenir. He suggested Connie read page 23 of the book. This page is full of provocative hints. As the book says, Carpe diem is life. Connie's cheeks instantly blushed. She quickly closed the book and felt a sense of panic. But she tried to keep her composure as she said goodbye to Paul. On the way home, Connie was inconsolable. She was both ashamed and confused by what she had just experienced. Connie doesn't know why she has such emotional fluctuations towards a strange man. But it felt like it was taking root in her heart and she couldn't forget it. Connie tried her best to regain her composure. But her mind kept going back to Paul's eyes and the book. She tried to push them out of her mind. But no matter how hard she tried, Paul's face would never leave her mind. By the end of the night, Connie longed for the satisfaction and comfort of her husband. But just as the two of them were settling into an intimate atmosphere, the sound of her son's cry was a bolt of lightning that shattered the moment. The next morning, Connie's heart fluttered again. Driven by curiosity, Connie took out the book Paul had given her. Just then a small business card slipped out of the book. Paul's contact information was written on the card. Connie's mind told her to throw it away, but she couldn't control her impulses. In the end, her impulses overcame her. Connie dialed Paul's number. The moment the call was answered, Connie felt her whole body shaking. Paul's voice was still soft. It was as if he had expected Connie to contact him. After exchanging pleasantries, Paul invited Connie to his apartment again. This time, Connie didn't hesitate. Her heart raced as she stood in front of Paul's apartment door. Paul smiled and opened the door for her. Connie walked into the familiar, yet unfamiliar room. And what was about to happen would change her life forever. Paul wasn't as subtle as last time. He took Connie's coat off and deliberately and tentatively caressed Connie's skin. Paul saw that Connie didn't show any resistance, so he didn't hesitate to take Connie's hand in his. Connie felt that she was walking into a dangerous abyss. She left Paul's apartment in a panic, filled with guilt and remorse. So Connie tried to make it up to her husband by buying him gifts. The couple had always loved each other. Connie's sudden actions left Edward unsuspecting. But this outward reconciliation did nothing to calm Connie's inner turmoil. When she got home, Connie couldn't stop thinking about her time with Paul. She didn't even realize that her husband had been standing next to her for a long time. A few days later, Connie couldn't hold back her feelings any longer. She entered Paul's apartment again under the pretext of delivering a gift. This time, Paul was even more aggressive. He asked Connie to dance with him. Paul's words of love were like hot flames. Connie's last line of defense was finally broken. But a sudden lull in the music jolted Connie out of her stupor. So she fled the apartment in a hurry. But under Paul's intense emotional assault, Connie was completely overwhelmed. Paul's energy and passion had Connie's arousal burning like a fire. The shyness of Connie's face and her rapid heartbeat. It's a perfect example of the hunger of middle-aged women for pleasure. While they're enjoying themselves, they were unaware of the danger that was approaching. In the following days, Connie began to see Paul more often. Paul, with all his tricks, always made Connie feel happy in a different way. 
Paul even had the audacity to invite Mari to experience a different kind of passion in a public restroom. Connie gradually became overwhelmed by this forbidden love. The satisfaction she received from Paul during the day led her to reject her husband's advances at night. This unusual behavior finally aroused Edward's suspicion. Connie thought she was in control and enjoying her secret passion, but she completely underestimated the complexity of the situation. Until one day, Connie and Paul were seen by one of Edward's subordinates at a restaurant. The news quickly reached Edward's ears. It was a ticking time bomb that threatened to blow up his marriage and his family. Edward instinctively did not want to believe this cruel truth, but the doubts in his heart made him unable to calm down. He decided to find a private detective to investigate whether his wife had really betrayed him. At a dinner party, Edward pretended to go on a business trip in an attempt to get Connie to let down her guard. The next morning, Connie fantasized about her passion for Paul. Connie was unknowingly headed for an unavoidable family crisis. As soon as Edward walked out the door, Connie couldn't wait to pull out her sexy lingerie and get ready for Paul. Paul took her to the movie theater. In the noisy environment, they once again indulge in competitive love. As they walked out of the movie theater in a frenzy of passion, they didn't realize that their every move had been captured by a private detective's camera. The next day, when Connie went to Paul's apartment with great anticipation, she ran in her best friend downstairs. Her friend's presence disrupted her plans. Connie had to go to a restaurant with her friend. In the midst of this reluctant gathering, her friend revealed her heartbreaking story. She said cheating always ends in misery. Connie's heart was filled with fear and nervousness. When she returned home, Connie felt a deep sense of remorse for her infidelity. After an agonizing struggle, she decided to break up with Paul. But when she rushed to Paul's floor, she was surprised to find him. Paul was cuddling with another woman. Connie's anger exploded. She didn't care about her image and hit Paul in public. Eventually, she was coaxed back into the apartment by Paul's sweet talk. Connie still couldn't resist. So the two were once again crazy about love in the passage. On the other hand, Edward has already received the photos taken by the private detective. When he saw his wife's intimate behavior with Paul, his heart was struck by a thunderbolt. Edward realized that his worst fears had come true. With anger and grief, Edward decided to go to Paul himself. He arrived at Paul's apartment with heavy steps. He saw Paul's disheveled clothes and messy bedclothes. Edward seemed to realize something when he saw that the crystal ball he gave to his wife was in Paul's house. The anger in his heart finally exploded. Edward grabbed the crystal ball and smashed Paul's head. Blood spurred out instantly, like a flood of water sliding down Paul's head. Paul fell heavily to the ground. Looking at the dead Paul, Edward's legs began to weaken. Fear and regret flooded his mind. Just then he heard a phone call from Connie. Connie left a message saying she couldn't go on with the relationship. She couldn't go on like this. Connie's message was like a sword stabbing Edward's heart. If Connie had confessed her feelings earlier, maybe all this tragedy wouldn't have happened. But now that it's over, no amount of what-ifs can undo it. Edward quickly recovered from the shock. He realized that he had to deal with this immediately. He immediately deleted Connie's message and began a hasty cleanup. Edward wiped out any trace of exposure. Then he dragged Paul's body into the trunk of his car. And to cover it up, he went to the theater. He pretended to watch his son's performance as if nothing had happened. In the theater, their son was performing on stage. But the husband and wife had complicated smiles on their faces. On the surface, they seemed to have returned to the past. But in their hearts, each of them hid unspeakable pains and secrets. At night, after Connie had fallen into a deep sleep, Edward secretly got up. He took advantage of the midnight darkness to dump Paul's body in a remote dump. He thought his secret was safe, but Paul's body was found a week later. The police followed the clues and eventually found Connie. After learning of Paul's death, Connie felt dizzy. A wave of fear washed over her. She had to pretend to be calm in front of the police. Facing the police's questioning, Connie made up a lie. She claimed that she had only purchased a book from Paul. In an attempt to cover up her affair with Paul, but Connie was under constant pressure from the police as they continued to question her. She was in constant fear that her lie would be exposed. On the other hand, Edward, who was afraid of being exposed, skillfully prevented the police from questioning him further. He tries to evade the law by hiding the truth, although the police have no solid evidence. But Connie and Edward know that this crisis is far from over. Connie could no longer control her emotions and cried in secret. Her heart was filled with remorse for her infidelity. A few days later, when Connie went to the dry cleaners to pick up her clothes, she accidentally found an envelope in the pocket of Edward's coat. Inside the envelope was a picture of her with Paul that had been secretly taken. This discovery broke Connie's heart. She began to suspect that her husband had killed Paul. When she got home, Connie accidentally discovered the crystal ball that she had given to Paul was lying around the house. This discovery confirmed Connie's suspicions. Paul's death was closely linked to her husband's. She looked at her husband in disbelief, and the look in Edward's eyes confirmed her suspicions. Connie could not stand it any longer. She walked slowly behind her husband, trembling, and questioned him. 
Connie pleaded with Edward to tell her the truth. Instead, Edward asked Connie what she had done. Connie didn't know what to say. She just stood there in shock. Her husband's words were like a sharp sword that tore their relationship apart. At this moment, Connie realized her impulse and betrayal had not only destroyed her husband's trust in her and pushed their marriage into an irreversible abyss. As Connie slowly looked through the family photo albums filled with warm memories, tears couldn't help but fall from the corners of her eyes. She picked up the crystal ball. She carefully opened the base. Inside were her husband's heartfelt words and a picture of the three of them together. At that moment, Connie's heart was consumed by deep regret and pain. She realized that everything she had done was irreparable. In order to conceal her husband's crime, Connie didn't hesitate to burn all the photos. As she watched the photos turn to ashes in the flames, her mind drifted back to the day she first met Paul. If she had refused Paul's invitation, if she had stopped that cab, maybe none of this would have happened. But in real life, there are no ifs and no do-overs. At the end of the story, no one knows whether Edward was ultimately punished by the law. But Connie's unfaithful behavior had already pushed the couple's fate into the abyss of doom. Connie chose to hide the truth thinking she could save her marriage. But in reality, there is nothing she can do to save her marriage. The movie tells a story of desire, betrayal, and destruction. Through Connie's experience, we see that every choice is like a piece on a chessboard. It could be a win for you, or it could be a total loss. Cherish what you have in life. Be careful with every decision. Don't let a momentary impulse ruin a lifetime of stability.